Hello everybody and welcome back. Let's talk about the problem meeting rooms. We are given a list of intervals defined by their starting and their ending times. And each of these intervals basically represents a single meeting. And now we are given a list of meetings. The goal of this problem is to find the least number of meeting rooms required so that we can conduct all of the required meetings. The constraints mention that n, the number of meetings, can be between 1 and 10 to the power 5. The constraints also mention that every single time can be between 1 and 10 to the power 9. So let's take an example to understand this better. Let's say the input we get is 5 comma 10, 15 comma 20 and 0 comma 30. What it means is we have three different meetings where the first meeting starts from 5 and ends at 10. So basically you can assume it starts at uh, time some t equals to 5 units and ends at t equals to 10 units. Then there's another meeting starting from 15, ending at 20, and a third meeting starting from 0, ending at 30. Now the output of this problem is 2, saying that there are at least two number of rooms required to conduct all of these meetings. And that is because we have to realize that 0 and 30, 0, 30 and 5, 10 are two meetings which intersect, right? They take place simultaneously, which means that we'll need to create two different rooms so that both of them can happen around the same time. Similar is the case for 0, 30 and 15, 20. Both of them again intersect, so we'll need at least two rooms so that the meetings can actually take place. All right, let's go ahead and uh, expand upon this example and try to work out how we actually got to a solution and simulate what is going to happen. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create these uh, meetings. So we have one meeting from 5 to 10. We have another meeting from 15 to 20 and a third meeting from 0 to 30. Now what we can do is we can go ahead and start scanning from the left to the right. And so I'm going to create a pointer and this is the yellow pointer that we, uh, you're going to see. And this pointer is going from the start to the end, scanning the meetings. Basically, it is going to ask the question, hey, how many meetings are there currently going on? And so the current variable CURR will start from zero, basically saying that there are no meetings at time of zero. And as we iterate, as we scan through these uh, times, we'll go ahead and increase the current, which represents the number of meetings going on currently. And max is the second variable we need to keep a track of, which will tell us how many meetings rooms do we require. And the max is going to be the answer at the end. So the first thing we'll do is uh, we realize as soon as we hit time zero, we see that there is one meeting that is starting at this point of time. So we'll need to increase the current by one, right? So now we can go ahead and say that current equals to one. What is the maximum number of rooms that we require? Maximum is just the maximum possible value of current. So we'll put one in this place as well. Now, what do we do next? Well, the next thing we realize is that from time zero, including time one, two, three, four, we will only require one total meeting room. And so the current remains one. But as soon as we hit time equals to five, we'll need two meeting rooms. Because at this point of time, another meeting starts, right? The meeting from five to 10 starts at this point of time. So the current increases to two, which means that there are two meetings going on simultaneously. Now, what is the max going to be? Max is going to reflect the changes in the current and become two as well. All right. So now from the point of time five, six, seven, eight, nine, we will have two meetings running simultaneously, right? So the current remains two and the maximum remains two. But as soon as we hit time equals to 10, the current decreases back to one. And that's because one particular meeting, the meeting from five to 10 has ended right now, which means that the current number of meetings going on is one. That's the meeting from zero to 30, which is still going on. So we'll still need one room to take care of. Now what happens from time 10 to 11, 12, 13, 14, we'll only ever require one total meeting room. But as soon as time hits 15, we'll need another meeting room to accommodate both of these meetings simultaneously. The maximum stays the same and the current becomes two. So then what happens when we move to the time 20? Well, current again decreases to one since we only have one meeting going on right now. And then at time equals to 30, the current decreases to zero, basically saying that the meeting that was going on earlier from zero to 30 has ended. So the only thing that is remaining is the maximum, which is equal to two, which becomes the answer. Now, one thing that we have done across this solution is that we're going over every single timestamp. So we're going at time equals to zero, we're going at time equals to one, then two, then three, then four, and five. 
right? And we're going to look at every single timestamp. We're going to look at every single time and scan across all of these meetings to know which of them is going on. As you can imagine, that will take quite a lot of time. In fact, if we have cases like these, where we have one meeting from zero to 10 to the power nine, which is by the way, a valid constraint. Whenever we have these kind of meetings, well, as you realize 10 to the power nine is not a feasible way to deal with this, right? If we iterate from zero all the way up till 10 to the power nine, we'll already get a time limit exceeded. And that's even just looking at one single meeting. What if we have multiple of these kind of meetings? That just means that this is not a good way to look at it. There's an optimization that's hidden somewhere. All right, so how do we think about the problem now? Well, let's go back to the nicer example and notice what you have done previously. The thing we realized previously was that we only care about the places where the change happens. So what it means is we're only going to focus on zero, five, 10, 15, 20, and 30. We don't care about what happens at time equals to three or time equals to seven or time equals to 16 or 24 or 31 or 32. We only care about the times where changes happen. We only care about time zero, where our meeting starts. We only care about the time five, when another meeting starts, I on time 10, a meeting ends. So we care only about the points of times where the number of meetings is going to change. So that's a central observation in solving this problem. In fact, what we're going to do is we're going to write down these formally. So we're going to say at times five, 15 and zero, we are going to require plus one meeting rooms. What it means is as soon as we hit time equals to five, we'll need one more meeting room. And if you look at the visualization, that makes a lot of sense, right? So what you've done is we've figured out, we have picked out all of the starting indices, which are five, 15 and zero, as you can see from the array on the top, and we have all assigned them plus one value. Similarly, we have assigned minus one value to 10, 20 and 30, because if you look at the array above again, 10, 20 and 30 are all the ending times. Basically saying that at time equals to 10, I require one less meeting room because at time equals to 10, one meeting has ended, right? So now what we can do is we can go ahead and write them in a better format. And we're going to create a tuple of the time comma, the change in the meeting rooms required. Now, the next step we're going to do is pretty simple. Once you understand what's going on, the only thing we're going to do is we're going to sort all of these numbers by their times. So zero comes first, then five, 10, 15, 20, and 30. Remember, this is the way we discussed, uh, in the initial example as well. This is how we are going to look at the problem. So what it means is at time equals to zero, I'm going to require plus one meeting room. So we're going to have this current and the max variable as before. And at time equals to zero, I need plus one meeting rooms. So the current now increases by one saying that I need one more meeting room than what I had previously. I had zero. So now zero plus one becomes one. What is the max going to be? Max is going to be the maximum value of current we have seen. So the maximum will become one as well. This is what happens at time equals to zero. Now what happens when we move to time equals to five? At time equals to five, another meeting starts. So we increase the current by one and the maximum reflects the change. Now what happens at time equals to 10? A meeting has ended. Now we don't know which meeting has ended, but one of the meetings has ended. That means the requirement for the number of rooms has decreased by one. The current decreases from two, as we saw here, the current decreases from two here to one here. All right. Makes sense. And similarly, so on and so forth, we can keep on going. We can keep a track of the current as how the meeting rooms increase or decrease and change. At the end of this iteration, you'll notice that the current becomes zero again, because all of the meetings that started, all of them have ended right now. And maximum is again, the answer to this problem. All right. So pretty simple what's going on, right? Let's go ahead and implement this. So this is the implementation with this question. The first thing we are going to do is create this uh, data array, this data list, which is going to store plus one. So for every single starting and ending element inside of this array for every single meeting, I'm going to say, you know what data dot append add the value S comma one to the data array. Basically saying that at this start point of time, I require plus one meeting rooms. The number of meeting rooms, the requirement of these meeting rooms increases by one. At the same time, I'm going to say whenever this particular meeting ends, go ahead and decrease the requirement of the meeting rooms. And so as I described earlier, the next step is going to be sorting all of these values 
so that we can iterate over them in a meaningful way. So the time is going to increase one by one and we're going to increase the time and keep a track of the current as well as the answer. So I'm going to say for underscore comma v in data, basically saying uh, I don't care about the time anymore. I only care about the change in the current. So I'm going to say for every single of these values, the current increases by that. So if v is plus one, the current increases by one. If v is minus one, the current decreases by one. Pretty simple. And the next step is then again, writing answer equals to the max of answer in the current. Basically saying that keep on storing the maximum possible value of current that you can get. And at the end, we can return this answer. So let's go ahead and uh, go ahead and test this out. And we are going to go ahead and submit this as well. All right, cool. So this gets accepted. Anyways, this is it for the solution to the problems meeting rooms. If you like this video, if you like the visualizations, be sure to give it a thumbs up. If you have any comments, criticisms, feedback to mention, let me know them in the comment section down below. And as always, thank you so much for watching.